Got a cold opening from a chest. The first of the year, I think. Maybe maybe not. It's been a blurry month. What's up, Spikelings? It's me, your one only friend, the e-boy, to carry uh, multiple Twitch categories now. MTGO and Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, yesterday we were number one in the Dark Souls category. Sparring Spike, welcome back to my no-hit Shark Typhoon. I've got a ton of sweet decks to show you today, so no time to tell the stream's only joke. Instead, just enjoy the marvelous water matches. Remember to like, share, sub, follow, hit the bell, support our sponsors, buy the new Lucy and Athena Plus use of Spikeling Store, and send gifts to the P.O. Box. Thank you, Chess. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, follow uh, Gondolin for the 15 months, Fleece Main for the 18. Um, so today we're playing kind of one of the new exciting decks in, in Modern, or new old exciting decks in Modern, I don't know. Uh, I, I've got like a little bit of a, I think that this deck is like particularly unique because I think that this is, you know, a deck that you can kind of trace the the lifeline on. And so I actually have a little bit of a presentation. I don't know. Um, so I, I wasn't the only one working on this archetype back in the day, but this video is from like six months ago. Um, this was like kind of the last iteration. Um, and this was a deck that I was working on around six months ago. What's up? Um, it's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Shy, thank you for the cheer. Um, and honestly, it's very similar to what we're playing today. It's very similar to a lot of the lists that are going on at the moment. There's a few small changes that a lot of people are making, but I, I guess one of the points I also want to make is that there's a lot of versions of this deck floating around, and they're, they're finding a, a, a good amount of success. So this was something I was picking up and playing around six months ago, uh, and then I think it was like two or three weeks ago, Emma Hagen... She, I, I couldn't find, I should have scrolled down and found the, the tweet, but she uh, 4 0 a prelim with uh, kind of an updated version. She made some good changes to the list. Um, and then um, she also, I think, 5 0 a league, or was it, maybe it was 5 0 league, not 4 0 prelim. But she, she, she finished in the tournament um, with the deck. She also beat us when we were playing on stream, like, like, the, like on one of those days. Um, and then Caleb Schur uh, picked it up and top aided a modern challenge with it and has been playing some prelims since then. I can kind of get an idea of what his like most recent list looks like. He's on. He's on. He's playing Swiss Spear two Bowmat three Epicure. Like a lot of like little small changes. Oh, Caleb's actually playing a Breach. I totally missed that. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> we're playing three Breaches in the deck today. Okay, well, a little bit of spoilers for later. And then this last Saturday, uh, Slasher twenty one MTG won the Modern Challenge with the deck. Um, this list is very like like um, th this list is also like in on Swiss Spears. Um, Playing a lot of fetch lands in this version, but only playing, uh, but not playing any breaches in this version. And then uh, I also want to highlight this this deck that uh, Doomlake actually is like. I think Doomlake trophied with a mono red version, and then this player BCS, um, I think was played this at, at their local RCQ, but is playing a version of splashing green for Tarmogoy, Fred and Six, Haywire Might, um, uh, Besage You. And I think this version looks pretty good. I would probably play Forgoy three red and six in this deck, but. Um, very very interesting list here. So, I I, I will say that I'm, I'm like really excited that this deck is kind of picking up in steam. I you know back then I thought it had a lot of potential. I think that the 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 Yorion ban was like definitely a big um, W for this archetype. That being said, um, I, this deck needs to be playing like three breaches. I I think like I I, 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 I but mostly too I think that the breaches are like much better than the light up the stages that are pretty stock in the list. Although I do think you have to make some other deck building considerations when you're working on the list so so as, as far as like other other differences that I, i've changed here i'm playing nine fetch lands um and i'm not playing any so kinzons or shinkas in order so, so i can have as many fetch lands as possible also having six mountains and the four urza sagas i actually yesterday and this this, this is something i want to talk about a little bit too um i i tried playing um a version without Urza Saga because I, I actually think that this deck it's really awkward that Urza Saga doesn't cast um it, it you know it, it does not count tap for mana for any of your 24 one mana red spells um obviously it can still tap for mana in this deck it's a bit better like in, in the anvil list but I, I I thought that like potentially just like playing um all of these breaches would give you like enough late game potential, and that this this may still be true. But the problem is, without Urza Saga, you actually are not doing great on like an, on your artifact count. Uh, you're not doing great on your artifact count is a, is an issue that I've had. Um, I don't mind the Monastery Swiss Spear additions that um, a lot of people have been playing. That being said, I I think Bowmet is maybe a little bit better than Swiss Spear, or like is like maybe a little bit underrated in this archetype. But it's also true like. 
I, I think that it's also very difficult to mess with your, the artifact counts. I think I, I see a lot of people cutting bow mats, and like in my playtesting last night, in my in my previous experience with the deck, um, my previous experience with the deck, I think that uh, messing with the artifact count is is kind of tough, and like it's a really good way to have your galvanic blast be shocks most of the time. Like as soon as you start like going down to one bow mat, I, I may be wrong about that. Obviously, like it'll still be you know four damage a decent amount of the time. But that's the kind of the main reason I prefer bow mat is that it is an artifact, and I think that that is. Um, really important. Uh, one more thing is, so I'm playing one more mana source than most of these lists are playing. I'm playing the Springleaf Drum and 19 lands. You, you, I think you'll usually see 18 lands, Springleaf Drum, or just 19 lands, but th because I'm playing three Breaches, I want to have the extra mana source, and I think with Breach, the drum is pretty nice, because, like, there's a lot of turns, like, that you sack Saga, that's the turn you cast Breach, and so, like, this basically giving you an extra mana if you have a creature in play, or if you're gonna play a Channeler is pretty nice as well. Uh, but like just like very shortly put like underworld breach is like a, a better top end card advantage spell than light of the stage in this deck um people i, I got caleb was playing one breach but you should be playing three i think i think you could be I think, I think you should be playing three or four in this deck and i know i know we've kind of been a broken record with breach but this is also like exactly the kind of deck that wants to play breach a deck with a super super low mana curve a deck with that's play, already playing four channel or four bobble a deck that like is interested in like burning your opponent out um this is like a, a really really good candidate for a deck to play out of war breach so um i just want to play like one or two leagues to kind of highlight that thought that breach is pretty busted here and we can um you know probably not gonna spend too much time on this deck but i, I do i wanted to spend you know a little bit of time just showing that you know this this is like a pretty pretty big miss for most of the lists all right we can keep this triple synthesizer is kind of a lot but you know curve is so low synthesizer is pretty good In theory, this is hammer time, <laughs> but uh, in practice, I think these days anybody playing a Ganjo is just is just tax is right. I guess I guess hammer time doesn't have any legends now. It doesn't have Luris. You used to play this in hammer to protect Luris from a bolt, but now I guess you have no legends. Thankfully, uh, <laughs> think if we have a bolt for this, this is actually you know one of the few matchups that you get really punished for playing this many fetches in, but the fetches are again really important for Breach. Yeah, I, Dumeg went, wait, wait, Dumeg went 10 in the last night? I thought that he went like 5-0, then like differently than, than, like, I thought he trophied with like Red Blast and then 5-0 with Gruel Blast. Was it really 10 and 0 last night? It's awesome. Is Dumeg back to playing Modern? Hmm? Do it. You know you're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stone Rain yourself, opponent. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for exiling my own mountains with Bowmat Courier here. They were still all uh, still on the deck there. Oh, we actually even get we have like cool selection here, so we can go bobble ourselves. If we want to synthesizer it, we can cast synthesizer. If we don't want to draw Bloodstained Mire this turn, we can just Bowmat over it. I changed two cards for first five. What did you change? I really wanted to play four Goyfs over the the fourth run and six in that deck. That could be wrong. Glad, glad you're liking the deck, Doom. Well, this is only one card, but we'll take it. Add a fourth Goyf and a map for Bowmat and Chrome Star. A map for Bowmat and Chrome Star I see, I see. Cut the Bowmats all together. Um I don't I, I don't usually like map very much, just like to find saga though. Especially when you're written six decks. Getting Masaju. Yeah, getting Masaju's nice. Which I think I think like the matchups that Masaju's good in are like matchups that you can struggle with. I think Bowmat's really good, though. Okay, march my Bowmat. Play an Aether Vial, it's fine. I think you're supposed to lead on Casting Synthesizer here. Cool, Saga's not too bad. I think I'll play and Sacrifice the Star. It'd be nice to find like another one mana red creature here. Get to play two, yeah, awesome, perfect.
Saga's gonna be large in charge. I guess they have the, the Field of Ruin for it, though. But if that's, you know, if that's their turn, Field of Ruining, that's fine. We get Delirium, too, immediately. Ooh, Blast Zone on one. Kills their Vial. I don't get these cards from Synthesizer, so no. Lost a Slap and Blast, lost a Ragavan. But now I am gonna get at least a Saga token. Was that even good? I mean, it was fine. It was fine. Without Light of the Sage, Epicure seems mediocre, right? Um, nope. I don't think so. I wouldn't say so, at least. Like, like you, you need you need to play Epicure in this deck to enable the Blast. Like, I, I, I think it's, like, almost just non-negotiable. Um, and then, like, I think that Underworld Breach is, like, a much, much better spell than uh, Light of the Stage. But also the Blood Tokens, they, you know, they, they, do, they help fuel Breach. You can loot away Breach early. I don't think the two cards play poorly together. I, I, I'm honestly, like, really of the opinion that um, modern players will just, like, they just are so addicted to freaking Light of the Stage. They will just do anything to justify playing Light of the Stage in their deck. <laughs> they just love Light of the Stage so much. But it, I, I, you know, I, I typically find Light of the Stage to be just kind of medium. It's okay. It's not bad. Good card. It's fine, but like I think I think in every deck that currently plays Light at the Stage, like you should play four breach instead. Or like three or four breach instead. Like like the the, the prowess deck that plays Light at the Stage just should play nothing but breaches. Um <laughs> like like four iteration four breach is so much better than four iteration four light at the stage. And like breach is better than this deck too. And so it's just like like it's not like in, in, in modern there's a lot of cards that are like fine and playable, and obviously you can trophy with them. And, you know, plenty of people trophy with this card, but it's suboptimal. Suboptimal is the, the word I've been using. Alright, so if they don't block, I guess they don't just die. I could go Breach Bolt Bolt here. Breach Bolt Bolt Bobble. It's fine. Should Burn play Breach? I, I think that the answer is no, mostly because I don't think that Burn is like, it's it's just kind of awkward on the mana curve. I could I could just be wrong. I could just be wrong. And like Dragon Rage's Channeler Burn with Breach is like, is potentially kind of interesting. I, have, I haven't like really spent any time looking at it or working on it. So, um, could be something I recommend y'all do if you know, if, if you if you think that, hey, maybe that's something, huh? Hit one. One, two, three. Traditional Burn is still way too tight to play Breach. What does that mean? Like, the, there's, like, no flex spots? Do you, I just... I don't know. It's okay. But I, I don't know that I agree. I, I think Again, I think that the fact that Breach is only good when you have four mana is awkward. I think that that's an awkward thing for Burn. I also think, you know, we were just talking about this, but, like, Breach is, like, not good with the Horizon Lands. Because, like, when, when you're playing Breach in your deck, you want to have as many lands as possible until and then you top deck Breach and win. And so, like, there's tension with Sunbay Canyon, a card that is, like, you know, amazing and, and burn, usually. Okay, can't feel the ruin my basics opponent. Literally can't feel the ruin me. <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't. I don't. I. It's non basic. <laughs> Not the. <laughs> You can't. It's. <laughs> yeah, they're filing for comp on the Field of Ruin bug. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, definitely these spell bombs for pro red creatures. Uh, we're gonna need all. Probably be about it. I'm done to trim a breach against their hate cards. Maybe trimming a blast from Epicurb. So 
So you're using a two seems card to play maybe only one two MC spell from Graveyard. Well, in theory, you're going to be pretty consistent at like getting to play two one mana spells for four mana with Breach. I think it's going to be pretty un uh, pretty rare that you only play one. You can even just be Mardu and like play Bump in the Night so like you have more one mana spells with Breach, but I, I can I could maybe test it. I don't think it's likely to be good, but it could be better than you think. It could be better than you think. Like Breach is pretty broken. Um, we'll see. My, my go live notification doom clarified that. <laughs> There's a reason two mana draw two isn't good and good and burn, you know. Mm. It's a little, it's a little bit better than two mana draw two. It's it's also like when you have five mana, it's three burn spells. You know what I mean? Um, I, but that, that that has been my opinion. That has been my opinion is that it's too high on burns mana curve. Like I that that has been the opinion I've had. Um. That that being said, like I I think that players tend to tend to be like pretty resistant to try to, like trying things in burn even. Um, I don't know if anybody's tried it. I like I I would like I I'll, I'm like at this point maybe down to like just give it a go in a league off stream or something, but that's not like exactly, <laughs> you know, going crazy. Yeah, let's keep that. Would I cut and burn for it? <laughs> uh, so I, I think that if we're going to be playing Breach, there's a good chance we're cutting Rift Bolt, since that card's really bad with it. Um, and you could potentially be in Mardu also and play Bump of the Night. And you could potentially move away from Lightning Helix also. Um, you could be just Red Black and not play Boros Charm, which is probably crazy. Uh, okay, topping that against the Rest in Peace kind of awkward, but that's okay. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's definitely what you should do, but it doesn't seem that ridiculous either. But I would also I would also play uh, Dragon Rage's Channeler. Um, I would definitely play like maybe it's either it's probably Channeler over Goblin Guide again. He's probably I think you have to play Eidolon. Skullcrack is okay because of Omnath. That, that's a terrible reason. Omnath is like at an all-time low in modern. You, you like I, if I played twenty matches of modern right now, I would not be surprised to not play against Omnath a single time. I, you might play it against like once, once or twice, but Omn Omnath is like really unpopular. Oh yeah, they should have definitely blocked the channeler. <laughs> People are just so scared of Ragavan. I think there's a non-zero amount of time you'll draw it with two or three lands, six cards total in your graveyard, and not get to do more than the equivalent of a cantrip. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, for sure. For sure. And so, like, there's a thing, like, it, it, I, I, I agree. But, like, it, it's also, like, this is this is also something that happens when Magic players uh, evaluate cards a lot. Oh, I should, probably should play my synthesizer first, Tom. Uh, but Magic players will, like go on and on and on about the worst case scenario for breach and burn. And I, again, I'm, this is, you know, an example where like, I'm, I'm on board for like breach probably not being that good. I, I like, I agree with that in general, but, um, I guess I'm going to bolt them. I agree with that in general, but, um, like we're, we're also not talking about the fact that breach, like can just be three mana, five, like five mana, three burn spells. And scales really well into the late, late game. Like, it's just it's just very easy to just go on and on about like the worst case scenario for cards, and not even oh, I should have attacked. I should have attacked and then bolted in combat if they vile something in. No, I'm not going to attack. Does that make sense? Like, like yes, worst case scenario, three mana deal three. Um, but like also like if you're like top decking and like you just need to top deck a burn spell and you only have three mana, like it is a burn spell if you have a one mana spell in your graveyard. Um, and it's also going to be like a, a card that will get you out of situations you could never win otherwise. Um, is it? Is it? It's again. I'm not. I'm not saying it is definitely good, but I, 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 you know, we've had these kind of conversations a lot, and people tend to go on. There was another like good example recently. I'm trying to, remember, I'm trying to think of what like what deck it was, but there was there was a, a a deck we were playing where people were just going on and on and on about the worst case scenario for a card. 
But like you know, there's also like really good case scenarios. For, I can't remember. I can't remember what the card was. Hmm. All right, let me just attack for one here. Yeah, you you would need to play DRC and Bobble in the in the Burn Breach deck, by the way. But DRC is already good in Burn. We've we've played like actually a decent amount of it. Like it's a good option. It's not necessarily like man. It's not mandatory. It's not like you know always going to be optimal. But it is like a good card in the deck. Just like Light of the Sage would be a good card in this deck, just like Swift Spear would be a good card in this deck, but we're not playing in them because I think they're a little suboptimal. The Career Wave Breach, yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. I feel like Burn is a hard deck for a Cyborg and making your deck soft to Graveyard Hate seems sketch. I, I really don't like this point at all, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Um, if, if, if your bur if your opponent is, like, all of a sudden bringing in, like, Leyline of the Void against you as the burn deck, you're probably pretty happy, because they're more likely to stumble, and the game will be longer, and you're gonna burn them out. Um, like, I, I, I don't think that, even if you play 3 Breach, 4 Channeler, I don't think that, like, you're even, like, that, that worried about it. Sorry, 4, 4, 4, four Channeler, 3 Breach. Like, you can bring in answers for Graveyard Hate if you want, but... Yeah, I just I guess I just don't really like the point very much. Again, I again, well, I I might test it. I I think it's unlikely to be, again. I think I think that most of the common opinions I agree with. Yeah, yeah, she's been here like every morning lately. Okay. Oh. Unicorn twelve months ago, thank you. This feels like the how to fix storm article. They just sub cards for Tide. Well, I mean, also, like, people can be, like, really cynical like that, or, but, like, the Green Red Storm deck is, like, really good, and, like, and, like Caleb is loving it, and I love seeing Caleb love it, and <laughs> we, we did kind of fix Storm on this channel. <laughs> I put it, ticked up Vile all the way to four, which I don't like. What can they even have at four? Maybe they're ticking up to Solitude. I'm just gonna go ahead and Needle Giver of Runes. It feels like this version of Burn will be weaker against combo, already Burn's weakness and stronger against fair matchup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I'm, again, I'm not... We'll see. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll try it out at some point. Restoration Angel, Sarah Paragon. Well, Sarah Paragon would be pretty bad here because of the, the rest in peace, right? So that would be good news. Okay, they can't... This is non-token, right? Okay, but they can target the needle. They can target the needle. Okay, so I don't have an attack. Fair enough. Yeah, it could be literally anything. I kind of my my gut is that they don't have a four drop and then they have a solitude. Yeah, it looks like that's the case. So maybe they'll stack the triggers where they take up vial to five, vial and solitude, exile both my constructs. Mm, that didn't happen. Yeah, Kale's back to making content again, which is really exciting. Did they not flicker their Skyclave? It's kind of weird, right? Caleb, uh, Caleb S, actually. Caleb, sure. Um, well, I'm kind of, like, just one away from lethal here. Gonna, I think just like wait and just blast them. End of turn. Okay, yeah, just, just blast them. They did. The you know regular is gone. Um, no, that was the first ephemerate. They didn't. They didn't rebound the ephemerate on the skyclave. Which is weird because they they could have just like given me a one one dexile like a channeler or something. Which like this is slightly better than a one one. I feel like our problem here is that most people have very specific thought in their head of what burn is. So when you make these type of changes, people think, oh, that's not burn, you can't do this. Yeah, that was yeah, very similar to the uh, the dialogue tree we had on a uh, old life total control. That was even like the origin of the, the life total control meme. Oh fuck. <laughs> I forgot that the star doesn't trigger with the rest in peace in play. Yeah, 
Yeah, it is weird you could undo that. How do you feel with the single format RCQ season changes? Um, I'm kind of neutral on it. So like, you know, this is, it's kind of classic. Um, okay. Like, it's something that benefits, it's, it's like net negative for me. It's like net negative for me. I think it's net po positive for Magic uh, as a whole. Never play around a Ganjo, huh? I knew about this? Oh, man, I guess even when you know about it, you can't play around it. All right, I think we have to pivot off of the burn them plan. Um, yeah, but so it's like, you know, negative for me as a as someone who is, you know, almost like, like exclusively a modern player at the, right now. Um, but like, I think could like I could definitely see this being just like also a net positive for competitive Magic overall. I think that like it makes it easier to like prepare one deck for one season, get really good at that, and not need to worry about practicing multiple formats for a season. I think that like that does make sense. Um, I think that does make sense. You'll play Pioneer, you're like, well, the next season's modern, their seasons are standard. I don't know. I'm neutral on it, you know. I have, you know, mixed feelings. This is this is something, too, like, in life, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of times where, like, announcements or news, whatever, like, affects you as a person negatively, but is, like, a net benefit for, like, the bigger picture. And I, I, that, that is how I feel this situation is. Alright, I guess we'll take the Epicure here. Well, we already have a Blood Token for the Breach. Never mind, actually. It's kind of looking for a Saga. And it's like, it's okay to feel bad about it. Like, it's okay to, you know, not be happy still. But kind of taking an unbiased uh, approach and an opinion can be difficult, too. Standard's just not fun for me at all. Um, okay, so I, I say this as someone who hasn't played Standard in, like, two years at this point. Have you played Standard? When was the last time you played Standard? I don't, you, you might have. You might have, but, like, I, I kind of feel like there's a good chance that a lot of the people who say stuff like this, like, Standard's not fun for me, like, like aren't playing it? Is that, is that like, fair to say? <laughs> Arena? Sure. I don't know. Um... I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I, I I think it's likely the case that a lot of people who have this opinion haven't played it. I know I haven't played it. Oh, awesome. Sog's great here. Yeah, I've actually heard like people who do play it are liking it at the moment. I don't know. When is Extended coming back? Todd was trying to bring it back for a while. I've never played Extended. I mean, I don't know. I don't think that there's much room for Extended when Pioneer exists. Ooh, they drew Ghost Quarter. So am I even playing my Saga out? I guess I am. How many mountains? Do I, do I, am I missing any mountains? I'm missing one mountain here. But I still should have enough to Gigant the next turn. I don't know. I um, we'll see. I I haven't played standard at all. I don't have an opinion on it. But like, I I'm I'm pretty likely to like if there's a standard tournament and I'm free, I'm likely to like you know net deck and borrow a deck and see how it feels. Um, you know I I'm open to liking standard. I like most uh, Magic players at one point have been really into standard, and I was you know a um, RPTQ, PPTQ, Grinder for a long time. There are a lot of standards I really liked, and there are a lot of standards I really disliked. RTR, Innistrad, Theros. Or sorry, sorry RT, RTR, Innistrad was my favorite. I didn't like RTR, Theros very much. My, I really liked, um, the... Um... Oh, what's the... What's the, the set? The one with Sahili. The one with, <laughs> with Sahili, Torrential Gear Hulk, uh... The Dynavolt Tower control decks. Oh, the Dynavolt Tower control decks. 
Kaladesh? The Kaladesh, um, Kaladesh Shadows. I really like Kaladesh Shadows. Ooh, Archon's really good against Synthesizer. Do I cash in this Breach for a Surveil 1? I think I am, dude. Oh. They're straight up chump blocking this fast. That's great for me. <laughs> yeah, Team or Tower, baby. That was a such a great deck great deck that was okay i have no more fetchables left i think i'm just gonna sack this now i get a 2-2 thankfully it's a leave the battlefield trigger i don't know again I, I i really like modern i wish that modern was like more of like the darling format of course but of course i wish that because like that benefits me a lot and so it, it can be it can be difficult in these kind of conversations to like, completely remove your bias and completely, like, be, like, impartial when it comes to, like, what you want for Magic. Because it's a big community, a lot of formats, and I think it, it is ultimately for the best to have, like, the spotlight shined on each format uh, from season to season, you know? So it's just big events are going to rotate formats. Uh, I mean, the, the Pro Tour is going to, like, rotate from season to season. Um, it's going to... I don't think it'll just be, like, stock... Pioneer standard modern in a row. I think they will do some mix-ups, but I think that that's good. I think you know that's ultimately like, like how it needs to be. There there will you know in theory be other tournaments too, like more format specific tournaments. Um, I I I I I had hopes that like more like GP focused events would be back. Like there there is there are the Magic Cons still, and like the Mag the Magic Con Vegas was really cool. I actually really liked Magic Con Vegas in retrospect. Um, I still have two Legends packs sitting on my uh, desk in a box, and uh, that I won from that event. I thought I thought that that event was really really cool. Um, and I, like what what I liked about Magic Fe Fest Vegas was that it it really was I think an event that had something for everyone. Where like the like there was like a, a a lot of it was like definitely focused on commander players, casual players, people who enjoy the atmosphere and the lore. And all you know, all that stuff. But um, and it wasn't perfect, obviously. But I, I, I think it really did have something for everybody. And um, I think that you know, bear, like the the price point was probably the biggest criticism. But I, I had a really good time at that event. Can you use can you shovel blast the treasure and use the treasure to cast it? No, you have you can't you cannot. Since sacrificing is part of the cost of using the treasure. How much do you pay to play at the super exclusive commander tables? Were you the talk of the town? I played I played a little bit of free commander with like I played one commander game with the nitpicking nerds. I love the nitpicking nerds. I was on their channel like two or three years ago or something. Um, it was really fun. I uh, I got to I got to hit my an opponent with an ancient bronze dragon or whatever the dragon is that makes treasures, which is something I've always wanted to do. I haven't done it since. <laughs> uh, it was awesome. I've been so I've been actually wanting to build an Ave Storm deck lately. Um, I've been wanting to build an Ave Storm deck. Uh, gross. Can't even like get my surveil value without using my treasure, which I don't think I want to do. Um, but like the problem with Ave Storm is like you have to have a guy as cradle, and obviously I could just proxy one. I'm thinking about maybe trading, like, my Legends packs for a guy's Cradle. I'm not sure exactly how clean of a trade it would be, though. Because, like, the pricing on the Italian Legends packs is, like, kind of all over the place. And then, like, the like the prices of guy's Cradles cha tra change a lot depending on, like, the quality. So, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think just proxying it's fine, but it's also, like... I think trading. I, I would never buy a guy this guy is cradle. I would also like advise that nobody spend um, six or seven hundred dollars on a magic card uh, ever, probably unless you're you know very well off. Um, I I used to buy you know all the legacy cards back in the day, but especially with like you know like, like legacy formats just like not getting almost any support. I don't think it makes much sense to to like buy them it, 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 if you're not like a big serious collector or you have you know a lot of fucking money. Um, that being said, I 
Like, if I'm just going to be trading, like, an asset for an asset, I think that's fine. Because I can sell, like, I'm holding, like, le both Legends packs and Gaia's Cradle, in theory, would likely appreciate at, like, somewhat similar rates, if that makes sense. So, I would be okay just, like, holding on to them. It's expensive because we need Yeah, sure. I know. But yeah, I, I think that, you know, Guy's Cradles and Legends Packs, I imagine they would go up at similar rates. I could be wrong. I don't really know. This is not a finance channel. I don't know anything about anything, also. And it's also, I don't know. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to buy a, buy a Guy's Cradle for a... Um, ooze storm deck that i will like play like like maybe like three times ever i don't know like i haven't played i've i've played my magda deck only a couple of times I, I also traded for like almost every card in that magda deck i bought a couple of them though so i'm not gonna want to trap them blast if i can get spell pierced probably well they're making a treasure token that's bad Why did you not double bolt them, then double shrapnel blast for the win? I don't think that that was exactly a line I had available to me, was it? Like, in order to be able to cast this second shrapnel blast, I needed to hit my opponent with a Ragavan. In order to hit my opponent with the Ragavan, I needed to bolt the token, right? All right, Underworld Breach off the top is a win. Oh, um, still a win. Still a win. It's nine damage. I drew the bobble. I, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I feel fine about my line. I'd have to go back and look at every moment. All right, three outs. Uh, I don't think I could synthesize or do anything though. What made creativity super popular last month? I mean, it's just like people like were underrating it for a really long time. There's also like a, there still is a lot of different builds, and like I think part of it is that people are unsure of the best builds, even now. They're at twelve. Oh, sorry, I thought they were at nine after the attack. I think I thought that one of the triggers had already resolved when it hadn't. If that's the case. They gained nine life. What was though? It was only six, right? It was two archon triggers, isn't that only six? How was it three? So they they creativity into archon. They copied an archon. Two ETBs and one attack. Oh, they the co okay. That's what it was. Sorry, I don't know why I didn't realize that the the copy had its own trigger. Of course, of course. Thoughts on Wafu's bit of four sharks and almost no planeswalkers. I, I don't have a strong opinion uh, as someone who hasn't like sat down to build a control deck in modern in a long time at this point. Um, that that being said, like I, I it's, it's hard for me to like keep up even because like, like Wafu just changes his decks all the time and um, I'm gonna bolt them. And I like I I think that they're like very likely well tuned and I, I you know I, Wafu is a great player. But, like, Waffle's list will, like, probably be completely different next week, you know? And as someone who, like, like when I'm not sitting down to, like, work on it myself, I just don't have a strong opinion. I think I'm down to sack this. Would love to find a creature here. Awesome. Got a lot of creatures. 
Is it worth the dead needle for Ren? I don't think so. I think you're diluting your deck too much, especially when you already brought in three Orvars. You could, though. So I can get Springleaf Drum. Hmm. Why draw step instead of upkeep? If we're talking about when I bobbled them, I, I meant to upkeep bobble them. I just, uh, if I misclicked then I draw step, that should have been upkeep. I thought I hit upkeep. I need to keep this Galvanic Blast up. Oh, my opponent iced me on upkeep. I mean, I see, I see. It's a tough spot. Never get spell bomb? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I'm supposed to get Springleaf Drum and cast Breach here. Yeah, I could make a token get Drum. I think that that was kind of the other line. I think it just puts me too fragile to like removal spell and token and untap creativity. Well, I'm kind of shocked with that there. Shocking. Okay, so let's hold up the Galvanic Blast this turn. Like yesterday. <laughs> Alright, so this is lethal. They have nothing else. We just galvanic blast them, shrapnel blast them. They have to have third lightning bolts. Make them have it, I guess. I guess they have a spell pierce also. No, they don't have to fetch shock to spell pierce. Well, they could they could fetch shock, I guess. Um Channeler is mana neutral because I'm going to sack the drum anyways, I guess. Yeah, so they have to have uh, Fed Shock for Spell Pierce here to get out of this. Okay. DRC best card from Image 2? Maybe. I, I definitely at like one point had that opinion. Um, like, Channeler, gets, Channeler wins so many games it gets no credit, though. Like, I, I've won a countless number of games because Channeler has surveilled like three or four lands into my graveyard while also being a one mana 3-3 three, three flyer. Um, I, I, like, I, I don't know, I, I, Chandler's, it's, it's kind of semantic-y, like, but I think Chandler maybe deserves a little bit more credit than she gets. Um, I think of the draw, actually, like, it's just kind of harder to, like, be in on, like, the Ragavan beatdown plan, so I'll, you know, maybe try to play a longer game and breach him out. DRC better than Delver? DRC is so, so, so much better than Delver. I'm going to say the card advantage ratio for Surveil versus Draw. People always ask this kind of question. Oh, how many cards is a Surveil worth? A, a Surveil is worth a card if you're top decking and you put a land into the yard. And then it's worth a card if you put, like, a Kroxa in the graveyard. And then it's, like... like, But beyond beyond that, it's, like... I, I don't even think, like, in super comparable. Or, like, it's really hard to define. I don't know. It's, like... It's like, it's like, like, I don't even know that you should put it on like a, a, a scale of like raw cards at that point. Maybe you should. I gotta believe in the synthesizer when you play this deck sometimes. It's like really good with Breach, like with Breach, like, like with, with Breach it's one third of a card, you know, so it's just kind of tough to say exactly. No attacks. Uh, my opponent killed my Ragavan in my beginning of combat stuff, I thought. I'd love to draw an Orvar at some point. So let's look at my land first, maybe. If my opponent gets a... Oh, they didn't even get a door in mine, huh? 
think we just pass. It kind of looks like maybe their plan is to creativity x equals 2. Yeah, we can Desperation try to draw Orvar off Bo Bomat too, potentially. It doesn't seem to be their plan. I'm going to blast this so I can keep getting in with Bomat for the time being at least. Maybe I should go um, cast Breach and then attack. We'll see what we draw. Mm. I don't think my opponent would be so rude as to fire ice me. Is monkey critical to the archetype? Uh, yeah. I think they're just so likely to have creativity here. Oh man, I already played my land. But I'm actually gonna sack this moment. I know like discarding breach is, is kind of madness here, but I also I also like straight up don't think I'm gonna win unless I find an Orvar. I'm gonna sack the bubble now so that I can guarantee the Orvar. Or okay, so not guarantee the Orvar, guarantee the draw towards Orvar. Have three. Yeah, you can play Swiss Beer over Ragavan. Obviously, if they just don't have a creativity, we're doing fine on two. Damn it, they have it. There's no way. They, they ever sacked the fetch if they don't have it. Tough game, tough game. Just gonna find an Orvar in game two or three. Oh, huh? They probably had one in their hand, huh? Okay, that's fine. Bummer. Bummer. It's okay. Mm, I want to draw with an okay hand. I think we can keep this. Or the draw. We have a bobble. We have an epicur. Up against Tron. No Gigantha, so unlikely to be Anvil Tron. Is there any card I could see on the top of my library here that I wouldn't... Like, would I keep a land on top? Maybe I would. This is... We can get these up to Metal Crop. 18. Well, 14 months thank you. Why am I trying to get Breach Brand? I'm just trying to build good decks, you know what I mean? Just trying to build good decks, and I I, th I think that breach is like incredibly good in this archetype, and I haven't seen it being played, so I'm trying to show it off. What well, man artifact would be a nice draw? They tap for black. Are they heartless summoning Tron? That would be so awesome. What? They straight up sacked for black and then made a forest, or played a forest. So random. There's Metalcraft though. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Caleb played one breach, but I missed that until this morning. I thought there were none. I thought it was all light stages. But you should play like at least three, to be honest. Like like I don't think you should play any number of light any stages before any breaches. Yeah, you can play Swift Spear over Ragavan as a budget option. Watch number three. Yeah, I mean, four could be the better number. I'm not 100% sure yet, which is why I'm only playing three. How can this deck go 10 0? I mean, not, that's not that good. I mean, any deck is capable of going 10 0, but this is also a good deck. It will not go 10 0 every single time. Thermal Alchemist is not a not even like close to playable. Please just play Swift Spear. <laughs> Please just play Swift Spear. Uh, I think I'm just. I think it's better to be mana efficient here and Shrapnel Blast. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna need to hold this for now.
Morning, Clyde. Could Emblem of Combustion be better than Star? Um, I mean, they're the same with respect to Shrapnel Blast. I think, I think getting the mana back is better than the ping. I'm not sure. It's better when your opponents have one life and you talk that good. Ryan, 17 months, thank you. So obviously if we can just blast them for two, Epic her, we win. We also win if we top deck a land to just double the shrapnel blast them. Um, I mean, if they don't have Worm Coil engine here, we're fine. We can even go, like, if they have Worm Coil, we can um, block Worm Coil, Galvanic Blast, shrapnel blast them, then untap shrapnel blast. <laughs> well, you should have read the go live notification, Avalon. Clarified. Listen, nobody's gonna click on a stream that says seven blast. They have to, you just have to clickbait a little. Please, I'm trying to feed my family. Well blast there we go, put a blast some in the deck. The, bre the Breach can replay Blast, so it's kind of like, it's really like, you know, 10 Blast. <laughs> the 8th Blast, where the friends we made along the way, hell yeah. Okay, so bring in our Alpine Moons. I'm going to play some number of Shattering Sprees. I think I'm also playing the Needle. I'm not sure exactly what number is. Like, Needle, I think, is better than Shattering Spree, even. But I think I'm going to cut the Chromatic Star. I think I'm going to cut the Fourth Breach. Cut the Fourth Bow Map. Fourth Synthesizer can probably get trimmed, too. Put, like, one Shattering Spree. Yeah. I, think, I think you want one. <coughs> Maybe not even. Trim Pyrite? Ah, uh, yeah, probably rather play, have the fourth bow mat over the Pyrite. It's always nice to be able to Saga for two damage though. Should Brim play DRC and Breach? We, we were talking about that earlier. I think that, I think that probably not, but I think it's like, it'd be worth testing. And like building it would be like not super easy too, cause like, I think there's a good chance you have to be you have to play bump in the night so that way you have like as many one mana burn spells as possible because for breach should be good you have to have a one mana burn spell in the yard. Um, but there's a chance. Is Chandra's incinerator too cute? You can use this combo piece you just displayed. Three mana dumb opponent six six body doubles up future burn. I think that it's a little bit too high variance. Like, I think for the most part, to even support Chandra's Incinerator, like, I think you have to be playing Rift Bolt and Seal of Fire, right? I, I don't know that... I don't know that that card even makes almost any sense without um, both of those spells in your deck. Like, in this deck, what, it's like... On turn three, if you have Shrapnel Blast exactly, it's good. Otherwise, like, it's like... Like it's only on turn three, but it's like basically never castable otherwise. It's also it's also true like you know, Charmers Incinerator was maybe kind of playable before Unholy Heat got printed, but like Unholy Heat was like a huge huge detriment to that card. Oh, they kept a one lander. What the fuck, Bump and Light? That's like Innistrad standard. I mean, it's a, it's, it's like the best burn spell there is. Also, <laughs> it's just lava. It's just a lava spike. What do you mean? What the fuck, Bump in the Night? What do you mean? It's just, it's just, it's just a one mana burn spell. <laughs> oh, why did I play Bump in the Night in my burn deck? Ugh. That card's terrible. <laughs> that's a, that's a standard card. <laughs> Would make blue to splash blue for iconoclast and we artifacts. Yeah, someone suggested that earlier. It could be good. We, we played a few different like breach iconoclast shells. I'm not sure that that is exactly um, something you'd want to do. 
Okay, they got a power plant. If I'm gonna Alpine Moon Blast Zone this game. Three damage for one mana? A standard card. No, thank you. Not today. Not on this on this day. Um, I can hit uh, Bomac Courier and get Delirium, so I'm gonna main phase bolt. Uh, I'll keep it on top though. What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> um, why are you main decking for Leyline of the Voids? I did someone unban Hogak, and nobody told me that we're main decking four in our Asmo deck. We're only playing three cookbooks in our main, but we're playing four Leyline of the Voids. That's nuts. Warping Whale. Besage you might be a better name. Uh, Alpine Moon doesn't stop them from channeling Besage you, so hard to disagree. All right, as far as the deck tech goes, I, I recommend that you don't play four Leyline of the Void in the main deck. I recommend that you play zero Leyline of the Void in the main deck. Um, that can be our start here. Any thoughts on Second Moon being on Tower in case they have to besiege you? I think it's just like way better to play around Blast Zone. I like I will lose the game to a Blast Zone if they have it. Um, the besiege you also like is not good for me. I know, but um, I think the Blast Zone is more impactful. Okay, so that's that's kind of my first note. Uh, my second note is. I really dislike the Spining Helixes, especially in the Urza Saga deck. It seems to me that you're like really, really interested in maximizing your discard value. And I think that the thought is, oh, I'll just discard Ley Lines if they're bad. But they're going to be bad a lot. And you are, you are just main decking a sideboard card. And like Leyline of the Void is like, it's definitely the kind of sideboard card people trick themselves into main decking from time to time. They're like, oh, Leyline of the Void is good against Murktide and it's okay against Creativity. And oh, maybe it doesn't do anything against... Hammer and Titan <laughs> and Tron. I guess it's actually against Tron does still have Star. It's good against Anvil Tron. Uh, good against Living End. But there's there's just like way too many decks that this is like literally a blank card in. And like being and saying, oh I can loot him away is just like it's just a bit too narrow. Okay, tutor it up a sage you here. Um like you can cyborg four and like and like when you cyborg four Leyline of the Voids, you also you shore up a lot of the problems that you would have you know, solves by main decking the four ley lines too. So I just I just don't know why we need to sideboard them. So that that's kind of the first thing. I really dislike that. Um, I kind of like the extraction specialist. I think extraction specialist is like a kind of fine value card here. Is it worth splashing white for? I don't know. I don't kind of I kind of don't think so. Uh, I would almost always play terminate over shieldred's edict in the sideboard. Um, but like, but kind of the, the biggest thing I see here, and like really the biggest issue is like this. This seems to be like a much worse version of like a food deck than the green red food deck I've been playing. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I think that like that that version is really really good um, with access to finale and Sandrith Seal Seeker. Like Sandrith Seal, like like you're you're choosing to play like Extraction Specialist as like your splash card over Sandrith Steel Seeker, and you're choosing to play Smiting Helix over Sandrith Steel Seeker. Steel Seeker is insane. It's it's like just one of the best cards you could possibly play in this archetype. Um and that's uh you know that's that's a problem here. Um You need to play four cookbooks. That's non negotiable. I think you also need to play four Daredevils. Uh, I also think that your Aether Vials are not great here. You have right now 17 creatures that work well with Aether Vial. And I, I think that I don't like this deck building that you have only 17 creatures that are good in, with Aether Vial. For Aether Vial, you want to be shooting for like minimum 22, really. You want to be shooting for like minimum 22. Um, and 
you could do that if you just were going to cut these bolts and helixes which are like not super synergistic cards like if you cut the ley line of the voids you could get eight creatures in here to make your vials like actually like pretty good impactful spells um, I think Rick's Mighty Reveler is pretty unplayable, though. I think it's really unnecessary, too, when you have access to Mutt and Spyro. Um, but if you if you really if your heart is set on Aether File, you need you need to play like eight more creatures probably. So like Go Goblin Engineer would be like much better than Rick's Mighty Reveler, and you can play like a um, uh, Frexian Dragon Engine too. That's something I've been liking lately. I really hate drawing the bolt. I think I'm gonna just go mountain. Epicur though. So just kind of like a lot of loose thoughts, but like I, I think that this deck is just not doing a lot of things very well in general. I think you've got your you've outsmarted yourself with Rick's Maddie Reveler, Spiting Helix, Leyline of the Void, and and in the process of outsmarting yourself, you've really diminished your card quality too much. I, I think that's all the notes I really have. You can't bring back Dragon Engine with Special. Special is only mana value uh, two or less. I plan on playing Blue Steel with Uncontus. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Um, that's it's definitely not super high on my list, but I started I started to like mess around with uh, Blue Steel yesterday all my days are blurring together um i started to mess around with it some though and uh, i'll likely try it off stream first we'll see I, I i don't really like the card is like like it's like on my radar or like it's it's a card that is like like technically powerful enough to like be put into a modern deck but is like in practice like it fits into an archetype that is really underpowered in general that makes sense. Ooh. Buy Urza Saga. Um, could Blood Token away a land. I think I'm just okay to untap here. What if they're playing the the deck Doom Make was to know with? All right, four damage. Nice. Any thoughts on strong stuff to proliferate yet? <laughs> um, I, that's kind of it's really vague question for a, like a, it's a very vague question for a very comp looking for a very complicated answer. Um, I have not been building a proliferate deck. I guess as the short answer, I, I think I'm unlikely to build just a pure proliferate deck. Okay, so if I go sack synthesizer on Goif, I don't add any extra card types here, right? Frank Carson's idea for Pioneer Hammer. I haven't seen Frank's like iteration on the list. I, I, a lot of people are gonna be working on Pioneer Hammer. Pioneer Hammer looks like it has a lot of potential. Uh, I'm very excited for it. Curve the gift of Slipper Roro. Thank, thank you. Okay. Definitely looking to draw a breach at some point this game. Kind of the tagline of this, uh, of most decks playing breach. Oh no, the lantern, really. <laughs> That's bad. And with double saga, rough stuff. That natural draw on Haywire Might was also really, really nasty. Uh, let me go ahead and Blood Token away. Scalding Tarn here. I wonder if, I wonder, I'm trying to think if there's anything I can see on top of my library that would really change much. I don't think so. And a bolt there, Karnstruck. Yeah, Kamigawa is a great set. 
Do you read others' articles for set previews of modern? If so, what are my thoughts? Don't they include I don't? I mean, a little bit. I don't. I don't, honestly don't dive very deep, but it's also like, I don't know when I would have the time to dive deep. Like my my, my review video that I did took me like seven hours. And like in between that, I'm doing a lot of like Austrian prep for the normal stream. I'm, I'm actually streaming. I'm writing my own articles. I'm prepping for the Dark Souls run and I'm trying to spend time with Esther too. So it's just like, <laughs> I, I just, I just, I don't really consume a lot of uh, written content myself. Well, they're not making a construct, that's weird. Okay, just make okay, just make it on the the other saga, sure. I think I can keep a lightning bolt. Is there anything ban worthy in modern right now? Uh, I think we should just ban Tarmogoyf to just retire it from the format. If any, if I have one complaint about modern, and it's and this is a really popular opinion, I think everyone will agree with. It's that modern doesn't rotate enough. I really wish that cards would just leave the format when I was done playing with them, and uh, I I think modern should rotate more, and I think it should change more, and I think we should just retire Tarmogoyf and Liliana of the Veil, Dark Confidant, Snapcaster Mage, Bloodbraid Elf, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, not Stoneforge Mystic, because that's that's that one's in a good deck now. Um, Siege Rhino, Kolagon's Command. These are all cards I think should be banned. I think they should rotate. Lightning Bolts, uh, sure. But like, but like, print a new better Lightning Bolt. Um, you should also ban. Um, I'm trying to think of other cards people like. Oh, Bitter Reunion. <laughs> Just ban Bitter Reunion already. It's time. I can't tell if streamer's serious. I'm I'm dead serious. Ban Snapcaster Mage, Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, Bloodbraid Elf. I don't know like what I said here that implied I wasn't 100% serious. Um, what cards do you like? Because I, I could maybe use my clout to get those banned too. Um, uh... Unban Splinter Twin, ban it again. <laughs> Unban Splinter Twin, ban it again. Heritage Driven, yeah, ban Vendillion Click, yeah, that's a good one. No, do not ban Golos. Do not ban Golos. <laughs> yeah, but Crypt that, yeah, Crypt I almost missed Cryptic Command there. Wait, why are they actually in my graveyard now? Seems so random. If anybody suggests banning Golos, you're getting banned, okay? Because, because like, really, I, what I really am saying here is I think we should ban cards that um, y'all like and, like, not ban cards that I like is really my goal here. <laughs> What if I don't like cards because you like them? Hmm, I'm going to ban you for kissing ass in the chat. <laughs> PDE, 10 months, thank you. Thank you. Five Spinners, Queen's Gambit, awesome. <laughs> I don't really remember too much about the show at this point. It's all a hazy memory, but... I do remember liking it. What are we looking for here? I think I'm gonna sack this for a card. Okay. Taking um, the hit from the construct is like definitely not ideal. I think I need to leave this back just in case they draw an artifact. I don't love that we're just dead to a burn spell at any point. They play so many burn spells, but I kind of think that's where we're at. It's funny how wizards may persist on the grave of cards with two knowledge and imprinted archon, which is just better than cheapening Emrakul Iona. 
I think I, I think uh, um, I think it's funny that you think it's funny. That was a hundred percent intentional. <laughs> it was it wasn't an accident that they printed uh, like Archon with Persist. It was it was on purpose. Like they wanted to like they they wanted to buff Reanimator as an archetype, but they didn't want the targets to be Gristlebrand or Iona. I don't think Gristlebrand is not you know I, it was on purpose. It was definitely on purpose. I don't know, maybe, maybe, that's not, maybe that's not what you're saying. Maybe I misunderstood. The intention was Archon to be less powerful than Legends. I mean, Gristlebrand on, like, turn two is better than Archon on turn two. I mean, not that you can persist on turn two, I guess, but I, I think it's comparable. I, I I think it's comparable. It's, it's like, situational. Like, Archon is better at stabilizing. Gristlebrand is maybe better at winning through anything. I, I don't I, at the very least I don't think it's fair to just to just to say one is just better than another. If that makes sense. Yeah, there will be a Dark Souls stream later today. We're actually currently on a hitless run. We just got past gargoyles. We got the flip ring too, so we're we're about twenty five percent through the run hitless, and we're going to be picking it up after the magic stream. Do I think creativity should be banned? Nope, not at all. Not even close. Like, like, one thing about, like, Archon is, like, your opponent can put an Archon into play, and you can Unholy Heat it, or Solitude, or Binding, or Terminate it, and then continue to play Magic. When Gristlebrand hits, like, you, you can't kill it and, like, continue to play. Like, the game's kind of over. Like, you could maybe kill your opponent if you're, like, ahead on board, but it's, like, just, like, just removal spelling. The Gristlebrand is not, like, a good strategy. Gigantha should be banned? Unironically, yes. It'll never be banned, though. I could keep this. Realistic opinion on Urza Saga before I send mine after it's signed. Well, it's it's tough because if you go get them signed, they will be banned the next week. If you don't get them signed, they'll never be banned. So it's just all in your hands. It's just all completely in your control here, to be honest. So choose wisely. I think we should dash Ragavan because they're a written six deck. I'm gonna close the door in a second. Do you think I'll stream some Pioneer soon? Maybe after the new set comes out. Um, I'm like I'm never like opposed to playing Pioneer. Like there is a time I was like I just I just haven't been playing it because I think Modern's been so sick lately. But I'm you know open open to it. Um. So I need to blast the Goyf before I play my Alpine Moon, because Alpine Moon puts an enchantment in the yard. Goyf definitely seems like the Mirror Breaker. Pioneer Hammer one time. I think I mean, a lot of people are going to be working on Pioneer Hammer time. Like, I think like by the time I would naturally get to it, it'll likely be pretty hammer hammered out. It'll be pretty hammered out. Uh, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. If I think that everybody's just building the deck super super poorly, uh, then maybe I'll try it also. <laughs> Is this thing on? If you could stop doing that, opponent, that'd be awesome. Mistral is kind of another lightning bolt to double bolt the goyf. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Tarmac a little too powerful. Cannot be blasted and bolted. It's a little too strong. Goyf is pretty good. People always, I don't know. It doesn't fit in every deck, right? But it's still a playable card.
Yeah, the lamp around. Yeah, the green, the screen red version definitely seems better in the mirror, especially because they have the lantern for breach or haywire mite for breach. Maybe the green red version is better. Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday, which is kind of why we're playing it today, right? Green Red with Steel Seeker. Well, so the problem is, it's kind of like, like, like yesterday, uh, we were playing the the Oni Cult Anvil deck, and I think we'll likely play some more of that. Uh, maybe maybe after the new set comes out, but like we were playing the Oni Cult Anvil deck, right? And before, like, we I think. I had a big problem where I was playing Goblin Engineer in that deck, and Goblin Gen Engineer is like a mid-range grindy card, and it's like a really good card advantage spell in that deck. But the Oni Cult Anvil deck is an aggro deck. And when you play grindy mid-range cards that don't facilitate your aggro game plan, I think you almost always just make your deck worse, and for, for the most part. And I think that that was um, the issue there. And I think that I think that if you were to play Sandrith Steelseeker in this archetype, I think you would also be you know, be playing a grindy card advantage spell in your aggro deck, which is just not something I think you should do. Does that make sense? So you help theoretically hit them down to thirteen, blast them down to eight. Not too many outs. Do you think the new land that could become an artifact could be good in the Oni Cult Anvil deck? Well, I'm already not playing Urza Saga in that deck because your color restrictions are so harsh. Um, I'm already not playing Saga. I think you have no outs. Um, you're, you're, you're not playing Saga, your color restrictions are so harsh. Um, and so it's like... I don't think that you would play this one there either. Like, I, I also, like, so I kind of don't want to play Urza Saga in this deck. Um, I was I tried a version without Saga last night, and I felt like I was just, I was missing, like, two or three artifacts. Um, but, like, th what I don't like about Saga in this deck is Urza Saga is a, is a land that doesn't cast almost any of your spells. And, and it's not as bad as it is in the Oni Cult Anvil deck, because it does still cast, like, Bomat Couriers and stuff. Although a lot of people are cutting Bomat Couriers. But it, it, to me, it's a big issue that, like, it doesn't cast, like... 24 of your spells in this deck or like 28 if you're playing swift spear do you know where my laptop charger is um i think it's downstairs plugged into one of the desks do we have desks that have plugs in them did you know that there. such technology existed in the end tables they're like end tables oh yeah i guess desks. Desks. they're furniture though <laughs> <laughs> they're furniture Pretty sure they're not they're not desks, all right. Maybe I'm exaggerating our wealth. They're just end tables. <laughs> all right, another Giganta opponent. Saga so Cascoy. Yeah, that, that's a kind of, that is a good point for the green red version. Is Oni Cult Anvil good in Pioneer? Um, we were playing some Oni Cult Anvil in Pioneer a while ago. I always found like it was a big issue that. Um, I just found it to be a big issue that um, uh, Car in the Great Crater was so popular, though. Do I think Breach could be banned? First time chat. Um, so I always, I always love to come and shelter the first time chatters who, who fear a ban. Um, I, I will respond how I always respond to this question is that Wizards mostly does things at random. This is the best advice I ever got when it comes to evaluating this kind of stuff. Wizards mostly does things at random, and could it be banned? Sure, but it won't happen until Julius P. Hasbro's grandson, uh, Phineas Hasbro, uh, re plays a modern league for the first time this year. Grandpapa, grandpapa, I was playing my quarterly league with abs and midrange, and I encountered... Quite the troublesome card I did. You won't believe it. I believe it was called <clears throat> Underworld Breach. 
You won't believe this. They were able to cast like like 30 Mishra's Bobbles into a Grape Shot on the same turn, Papa. This is bullshit. It was even a turn before I could get my Siege Rhino down. Ban it, please. <laughs> Grandpa Hasbro, please. Grandpa Hasbro, please ban Underwood Breach. <laughs> It's not fair! <laughs> I think this is how they should do it. It's how they do do it. It's definitely how they do it. It's 100% how it happens. Just hearing from the next Tuesday is officially one. That's what that's what I'm operating under. We'll see what happens tomorrow, I guess. Still a better system, Commander. You're damn right. <laughs> you're damn right. <laughs> Papa, this 80 card deck is way too hard to shuffle. <laughs> I've gone through I've gone through eight interns shuffling my decks at my RCQs. This is ridiculous. Their hands are falling apart. And they're saying, oh, we don't have any health coverage. And I say, of course, of course not. You're intern. You're lucky to work at Hasbro. Sorry, my accent kind of fell apart as I was constructing the bit. <laughs> Things of Naya show with exploring further. Something with Reclaimer, Goyfriend, Six Titania, White Removal, Pending Leyline. So the issue with Naya as an archetype is like you, like, you basically never have... Um, premium interaction for linear decks. Like, you're usually really weak to spell-based combo and big mana strategies like Titan and Tron. Um, ooh, one of my mountains is underneath my bow mat. Um, and so, like, and, and the, like, so, like, that's always a problem is that you're, when you're usually, like, really weak to spell-based combo and, um, and big mana as Naya without, like, something like main decking Blood Moon or um, main decking Blood Moon because, like, you're Naya, that's kind of all you got. Or, like, you can play, like, disruptive creatures but the problem is like when you do that you're usually like not at that point you're usually like not that good at out grinding the grindy decks and so it's just like you're just not doing very many things well is the the issue uh that's not a bad card huh could have been underneath the first moment that's true that's true although it wasn't thankfully i'm gonna hold this for a turn Yeah, time to cast 30 bubbles. I really hope my opponent is not Julius P. Hasbro's grandson, Phineas Hasbro. Although I guess it's unlikely since they're also playing Breach. Oh yeah, we should have just grabbed that. No! Spell snares! No! This is part of what I'm talking about with, like, the metagame is, like, not that adjusted for Breach. Like, obviously my opponent's, like, ten steps ahead of everybody else here. Uh, fuck! Oh, no! Spell snare! No! <sighs> Maybe it's fine. Maybe you don't need to ban it, right? Maybe just play a couple spell snares. Dude, Snare is so good. Oh, man. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, ten, an incredible amount of psychic damage there. I've been wanting to play a Spell Snare Stampcaster deck for a little while. Oof. No fetchables left. <laughs> no artifacts to sack, alright. No will to live, no will to fight. You want at least one Tormod's Crypt. Just a Crypt out of the drum. Maybe we don't want the drum to be cut. Actually, you can cut Epic Trim and Epicure. The play. 
Is Rabbit Battery good enough for a Sogless version of deck, or do you like that card too much? Well, the problem is, like, Rabbit Battery is, like, only good when you have a Saga token that you want to haste. That's, like, the only situation that it's good enough. So, I don't think so. Stopcaster Minor Misstep. I think, I don't think that Minor Misstep is going to be main deckable. Or, like, I don't know. I always say stuff like this, but, like, it might be fine to main deck in some meta games, but I think it'll almost always be, like, Less optimal in your one mana in your one mana counter spell suite than uh, spell snare or spell pierce is my current evaluation. Especially because minor misstep is awful on the draw. Like if you if you're ever planning on like losing a die roll, I I, I do not recommend registering minor misstep in the main. We play this deck if you can't afford Bomet couriers. Ah, uh, Ragavans probably. Uh, there's, you can switch beer if, if that's a real question. I, are are Bomac Couriers uh, any other like a thousand dollars because of EDH? EDH is something else. Like we look at our top card, and if it's a, a land or a Bomat, we can play it. Perfect. Hope of Gia per baby. Let's go. This is another reason why I like Bowman over Swiss Spirits. Like, like Saga can actually like tap for a spell <laughs> when you for man, tap for mana when you have Bowman in your deck. Just I, again, like I, I, this is something I even thought. I think when I was working on the archetype last time, like six months ago, is um, is that like if you could just cut the sagas, if there was just like one more good enabler that wasn't a colorless land, the deck would be much better. Well, pretty bad that I uh, don't have a land to play. Maybe we'll find one off this. Can't spell snare this. Like Great Furnace? I mean, exactly like Great Furnace, yeah. I mean, I think the artifact lands are like, not unbannable, but that, that would be like, that would be the card you need, yeah. For sure. I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't be that bad. They probably would, though. The white one would be really good in Hammer. It's kind of funny. Maybe the white one would be the best one because of Hammer. You could have been the green one, maybe? The black one? Probably probably best not to touch, t touch the bear. Maybe too good? Yeah. Like probably like I mean they would be like really polarized right where they be they be they would make a lot of cards like thought thought monitor Urza Saga like much stronger game one but then they are also like really weak to, to artifact tape probably not for the best. Would it be stupid to play a Dragon's Claw and my Murktide Cyborg for this matchup? Um, I don't think that you're, like, I mean, I, I, Murktide's not a great matchup for, or doesn't have a great time against these kind of decks, but I don't know that it's so bad that you need to, like, dedicate a sideboard card for it. I don't even know that that sideboard card should be Dragon's Claw, necessarily. Um, like, I would, I would probably just be playing, like, Brotherhood End instead. I think I like getting crypt, just like stop them from breaching me. Is Blossoming Calm good against the stick? I mean, yes, yeah. Just like you know, stopping the blasts is it's good enough. Like you'd always board it in. This is a way to fit three Iconoclasts and this is a way to generate artifacts. Huh, I wonder, I wonder if that's like, I wonder if that's the solution to our problem. Because, like, again, like, the issue I have with this deck is, like, Saga doesn't cast, like, any spells. <laughs> and Saga also, like, like we, like, we got wrecked by Haywire in my last game. So, what if that is, what if, what if Iconoclast is the answer? Splash, plus blue for just Iconoclast. Over Swift Spear. It kind of raises the curve maybe a little too much. That could be it. Could be the answer to our problem, though. Answer to our prayers. 
We may do it last time in Thoughtcast. I don't know. Maybe I, like I don't know like what literally what we're cutting for Thoughtcast. Also, Thoughtcast and synthesizer maybe are a little awkward together. So I just got tagged before. If you're not playing Saga, you could cut the couriers. Uh, you could, but like again, like I think that you you just need that density of artifacts. Although Iconoclast is worth a lot of artifacts. We could trim on couriers too. We might we, we could do that next week. Like I, I kind of class does seem like a pretty good fit. And and again, so like I I was mentioning this to like this was what I thought last time I played the deck like six months ago. This was my plot last night. Is that again? It's it is a problem that Urza Saga does not cast twenty four of your spells. Um, like and potentially more. Some of us like play like twenty seven cards that Urza Saga doesn't cast. Um. And, like, they're doing it in, like, a 19-lane deck, too. It's, I don't know, it's tough. Um, iteration? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, like, at that point, like, you know, it's... We'll have to see, like, at what point does this idea just become fair breach, you know what I mean? But Goblin Blast Runner? Um, that one's not legal. Oh, that, that's the one where you sack a permanent, it's, like, plus two plus... Oh, and Menace. I don't think that card's very good. Ain't that bad, though. Somewhere in the horrible nebula between good and bad. Any spell? Any spell snarers over there? That's what I thought. Well, I think I'm a little short of a kill here, though. Oh, maybe we should have gotten Bowman Galvanic Blast instead of Crypt Blast. Guess I could Shrapnel instead of. No, I'll just Galvanic here. Them having no cards in the graveyard too is really nice because of Breach. Why didn't we blast twice? Uh, we needed to bobble first for Metalcraft. Splash black for cat oven one drop squirrel. Uh, um, don't think so. So like, the problem with cat oven is it doesn't actually play that well with either blast because like you need your food to recur your cat and then like you're not putting a lot of foods in play for uh, galvanic blast usually either. It's not like a terrible suggestion, but that's that's kind of the issue I think. Smash recently by a Buster deck, achieved three power minutes for one is stronger than you think. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, Red has nothing. Red has like nine, or not nine, maybe like seven, like crazy one mana spells in modern. They have Ragavan, DRC, <laughs> uh, Swiss Spear, Soul Scar Mage, um, well, darn Epicur. Uh, Boma Courier, and so it's, it's it's just like you like you have like nothing but good options, and I think like this card is probably a little bit worse than all the ones I just said. Uh, Vare with the uh, subscription, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this list. I thought that the cranial plating is really really bad here, to be honest. I'm gonna blast now because of spell pierce, like. So you're playing Minmite, which is okay. Um, like Minmite makes cranial plating better, but like Minmite's also like worse than Voldar and Epicur in this list. And like, th like th this deck just doesn't have enough, enough, enough creatures. This deck was playing way too few creatures. I remember, I remember this list. Asma Blast. So we 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 played Asma in the shell. Like a so like I don't. We we've already been down this road. <laughs> we've already been down this road. Let me see if I can even find the history but like this deck started off as like as an asmo deck but asmo is not one card it's 12 cards it's tough and like also like asmo is like not that aggressive of a card like you're a burn deck with like four freaking uh oval chase daredevils in your deck this is i think this is an, an, a, like a really good example hand of like why saga is just so awkward in this deck it's obviously fine it's not like Actively, actively terrible, but 
think it like th this kind of hand is like why I'm not that into Saga. It's Cabal Coffers, Boro, enough for Mirren safe house to be worth brewing. I mean, what do you need like five lands in play and coffers, uh, and Oboro to be in your graveyard? It sounds fun. It sounds really fun. It's it's like worth it's like it's it's at least like interesting enough to like start putting drafts together, you know. Why not wait for bubbles since we have Breach? Breach? What are we talking about? Breach? You mean? Um, I'm, I'm using my bubble now because I need to find another red source. If like this Urza Saga was a red source, it's it's awesome. I get to like go, I get I get to just double channel or triple surveil on turn two, but like I, I just can't play two one drops next turn. So I have to, I think I have to play my channeler here. Ready? 29 months. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you're doing well. Pal, three months ago, thank you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, there's um there's a green red version that's going around. Doom Lake was actually 10 to no with it last night. Um Doom Lake was 10 to no with it last night. I think that, that version is pretty good. And, like Saga is much better there too. Um Saga is like definitely a lot better there. Like with Ren and Six also helping you hit your land drops and really like, recurring saga. Um uh, thanks for good content. Would it be okay with a legacy deck if I don't know for it? You, you should you should not don't know for a legacy deck, like it's not that I'm, like, just, like, turning my nose at it, but it, the issue is, like, I haven't played Legacy in a really long time. I couldn't give you, like, meaningful, like, constructive feedback on it. I think keeping the spell bomb for a second channel layer would have been better. I mean, it's, it's like, better if we, like, if we know we're going to brick on a mountain, but, like, I, I think that, like, just getting, like, an extra look at a mountain by surveilling it to the graveyard is, is better. With the Hurston play, I'll discard a channeler here. There we go. Um, I guess we can attack. If they can get Delirium and instant speed, good beats, but. If they can't, it's really good for us to attack, and I think that's fine. Shouldn't we have sacrificed blood last turn? Um, yes. Crew, it's crew two. They only have one power here. They like snap, put consider in their graveyard. Seems like a lot of Merktide today. Uh, this is a Merktide. This we're playing against a, another fair breach deck or fair breach. Does look like it this game though. I mean, I could be wrong, right? But they're they're definitely just sky, which is usually fair breach with a splash for like to fairy. Oh yeah, basic mountain too. Basic mountain also. I think we've only played against Merktide once. Maybe I'm misremembering. Hit Delirium. It was a really, really well timed expressive iteration for them. I think I'm gonna go Saga Token into. Oh, I could get Tormont's Crypt. So if I get Tormont's Crypt, the problem is they can go, they can just crew both hearses so they don't have to attack into my uh, board here. And I, I, I do kind of need the mana, so. Just do this. Already kind of starting to look at um, this version. I don't know, like the Iconoclast maybe solves some problems here. Hmm. Maybe at this point, I'm not sure. Like Iconoclast is also like not that aggressive, which is kind of an issue. It raises the curve really kind of high, maybe a little too high in your synthesizer deck. 
Might have to play iteration. And like, I, I feel like at this point it would start to be like a little bit worse than like the like just prowess or the like fair breach decks we played in the past. I'm not sure. Might have to like mess with it off stream. Uh, opponent is playing Giganta. Yeah, so this is also like definitely why their breach is the Giganta. Another iteration is gross here. Gold Town. I don't think Gold Town is like really that close to playable. I could be wrong. Didn't have a lot of experience with it. Is it worse or just a slower, different play style? I mean, it's hard to say definitively at the moment, but. We'll see. Might as well test it. Yeah, maybe more off stream though. We'll see. We'll see. I'm glad we're finding things to do though in this like downtime before one releases. I was gonna play a Pioneer RCQ this weekend. What would I play? Uh, I don't know. Maybe creativity, but. Like the, the real answer is I haven't like given any thought to Pioneer in at least a month, so yeah, I, someone else could probably answer your question better. If only we knew any handsome streamers who really, really enjoyed Pioneer. Have I brewed with heal engine alignment before? No. <laughs> no, I, I I mean I don't like just try to make cards work. Like, you know, it's okay to have that attitude, but like Hedron Alignment is like, you know, a, a really funny card, but also like disastrously unplayable. I think I'm strap blasting them. Probably getting spell snared. Try white for Sentinel. Alex looking for the raid. That might be it. You also get access to portable hole. Is there any other, any other white card you want to play? I'm kind of into it. It's a good, good idea. No, you don't. I don't think you play Boros Charm. I don't. I don't hate the thought though. Yeah, Smith is a little bit too mid rangey. Like I would play one of these probably over the two drops. Dispatch Inspector. Yeah, maybe the side like Dispatch. I don't think we're gonna play Inspector. Brings this 8 8. I'm gonna block if I can. Well, they should have cast this before crewing, probably. Yeah, we already have the Sentinel. So, so again, the whole thought here is that, like, I really dislike that Urza Saga. Um, I really dislike that Urza Saga just doesn't cast almost any spell in this deck. Um, and But, like, I do think that we need, like, the critical mass of enablers, and so that was the issue. And so, Sen Sentinel is really good. Sentinel is a one mana spell, it's an artifact. I think it makes a bit more sense than Third Path Iconoclast. It's a really good card too. Just, just a really good card. Um, makes your mana a lot worse. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, discard the breach here because of the, the, the all the damage the hearse has done. We're mostly looking for a blast here. Can Smith fit in? I mean, I don't, I don't, a Smith is kind of slow. I would like, I would rather play like another Breacher Blast probably. Something like this, just three bow mats. Okay, so they're dead to any burn spell. Okay, now they're not dead to Galvanic Blast. Oh, fuck. Okay, no, 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 this way, never mind, it's good to do it this way. So I want to, um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not even, like, definitely dead this turn. Should I Gigant in hand for the Blood Token? No, I think, I think I'll just, like, be able to play around spells, pierce a little bit better, and if I draw a dead card, I'll just discard it to Blood Token, and 
try to find um, Shrapnel Blast. Maybe, maybe I guess I could have attacked with both to try to also find Bolt. But I like that I can just like buy a whole extra turn if I don't do that. Chromatic Stars plus Kodoth Rebirth. Yeah, maybe when the new card comes out. Oh boy. All right, I would. It would be like a really fitting end here to, to lose to Spell Snare again. Mark, 14 months, like, thank you. Right, nope. How good is I think Bowmet's really good. I think Bowmet's really good. Um, not a mandatory inclusion necessarily, but like, I, I think it's better than So Spirit. It's a, cause it be, like being an artifact is just so important if like we're really trying to play these blasts. Um, but again, like what I don't like about Urza Saga is it doesn't cast like any spell in the deck. I don't know. Maybe I need to work on this off stream. We'll see. Slag Fiend. I mean, is Slag Fiend itself is is Slag Fiend itself an artifact? Because if it is, I'm I'm maybe interested. Ha <laughs> ha